Welcome to the Apocrypha Exposed Part 2. In this part, we will be examining the historical inaccuracies and the fact that the Apocry Apocrypha itself admits to having no prophets, which means every person that wrote this, these apocryphal books was not a prophet, and they admit it in these writings. So let's take a look. We're going to go to the apocryphal book, Judith 1, verse 5. Judith 1, verse 5. Even in those days, King Nebuchadnezzar made war with King Arphaxad in the great plain which is in the plain in the borders of Raga. And there came unto him all they that dwelt in the hill country, and all that dwelt by Euphrates and Tigris and Hydaspes, and the plain of Arioch, the king of the Elameans, and very many nations of the sons of Chilod assembled themselves to battle. Then Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Assyrians, sent to all that dwelt in Persia, and to all that dwelt westward, and to those that dwelt in Sicilia and Damascus, and Lebanus, and anti Lebanus, and to all that dwelt upon the sea coast. So, the historical inaccuracy here is that Nebuchadnezzar is called the king of the Assyrians. But the Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar was the king of the Babylonians. So you see right there, historical inaccuracy. Whoever wrote this did not know their history. Now it's that simple. Wouldn't you think that the Lord, if he wrote these books and inspired them, that he would allow for such a mistake like that? I think not. But let's go to the next historical inaccuracy. Go to Barak chapter 6 verse 2. The apocryphal book, Barak chapter 6, verse 2. Because of the sins which ye have committed before God, ye shall be led, led away captives into Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Babylonians. So here the apocrypha, apocrypha actually contradicts itself right in the next few books over by uh, correcting the error made in the last book. Again, definitely not inspired. But, uh, so when ye... Uh, when ye become unto Babylon, ye shall remain there many years and for a long season, namely seven generations. And after that, I will bring you away peaceably from thence. So this says seven generations. Now, go to in your Bible to Jeremiah chapter 25, verse 11. Jeremiah 25, verse 11. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon seventy years. So again, Apocrypha contradicts Holy Scripture. The Scriptures say that it's seventy years. The Apocrypha says that it's seven generations. This is not inspired. This is inspired. This is not inspired. Quite uh, simple to prove, you know. And now let's go to all the passages where this book admits to having no prophets around to even try try to inspire it. Go to First Maccabees four for, uh, four chapter four verse forty six. And laid up the stones of the mountain of the temple in a convenient place until there should come a prophet to show what should be done with them. So, supposedly inspired, the Catholic Church believes, but yet they're waiting on an actual prophet of God 
Prophets are the ones who write inspired writings to show up. Again, proving this to be nothing more than just uh, a bunch of junk. Now go to 1 Maccabees 9.27. So there was a great affliction in Israel, the like whereof was not since the time that a prophet was not seen among them. Again, another passage confirming that there are no prophets around to write inspired writings. Yet the Catholic Church believes this is somehow inspired. Essentially because it goes along with their agenda for their false doctrines such as purgatory and all the heretical stuff that they teach. Now go to 1 Maccabees 14.41. Also that the Jews and priests were well pleased that Simon should be their governor and high priest forever until there should arise... A faithful prophet. Again, a third passage confirming that there were no prophets, especially no faithful prophets. This is not inspired writings. This, this apocrypha confirms its own contradictions, and it also confirms that there were no prophets of the Lord to write inspired writings. This is just uh, many of the proofs that are in this false text to prove that it has no place in Scripture. It is apocryphal, it is pseudo, it is fake. But that concludes this uh, episode. Be sure to watch out for episode 3 where we go, go more in depth with a couple more things. But that should be it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching the Super Christian YouTube channel. I have an ever-growing archive of videos dealing with topics such as the Illuminati, New World Order, the Jesuits, secret societies, news reports, exposing occult symbols in films and popular media, plus sermons and biblical teachings. You can like us on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and Instagram. Please be sure to subscribe, and God bless you all.